in our previous tutorial you were able to add the uh, uh, one of the applications or register the application into our uh, project settings and uh, in this tutorial as i had mentioned earlier is that we're going to look at uh, what you call the customizing of the django uh, user model and uh, just to refer to the django documentation uh, basically what you are doing you are customizing the base the base uh, user model for django uh, and why are we doing this this is because if you if you look at uh, if you are creating an application let's assume if you have worked with an application like instagram you may require to have something like an email authentication rather than uh, username authentication alone uh, when you are logging in so this kind of uh, customization or this kind of uh, provision okay, it's already there in the user model but you may want to extend it further you know maybe you may want to have a user's date of birth or any other uh, fields so basically this means that you need to be using a custom user model when you're starting a project. And uh, as you can see, this is highly recommended by the Django documentation. And uh, there's one thing that it, uh, we, are, we are also told here that when you're changing it, when you have already started your project, you know, it can become significantly more difficult. Yeah, since it will affect the foreign keys that are already in the database uh, and the many to many relationships. And there's an example that has been provided. I'm going to share this link in the description below. So let's create our uh, custom, uh, customize uh, the user model. So we are going to begin with uh, a Docker Compose command. Remember our commands, as, as highlighted earlier, we are running them inside the, the, uh, the container and not inside the, and not in our local or uh, in our local machine or in our host machine. So we are going to run docker compose uh, exec command because we want to run some command. And our container is called web and the command will be Python based. So it's python manage.py and uh, we'll create an application. So we'll use startup and we'll call it uh, users. So what, what happens in the background is that it creates these users, uh, the users up and while you can see it, still see it here, uh, this has also been replicated inside the container for uh, the Django container. And how can we confirm that? Allow me to go into the Docker container and in this web container, we are going to run, to open it in the uh, terminal inside the container. And if I do my ls, uh, lsla, you'll see that we have uh, the users. So remember, this is inside the container, not in our local folder. So you can see that the procedure has been, it has been, it has worked, and it has also created uh, this application. So the next step will be adding our application in the settings.py file. And uh, this will be users dot uh, apps dot users config. So just like what you did earlier, this is what we have. We have our app which is users, and then inside the users we have apps file, and then inside the apps file we have this class which is users config uh, class. So I also need to add a comma there. And then I'll also add another one there. So we have the next step will be customizing the models that uh, the models for our application. And we have uh, what you're going to do, you're going to uh, import the what you call the abstract user. And we'll import it from Django uh, contrib uh, dot auth dot models and import what you call the abstract user and then we also have something else that is called the abstract base user so this abstract user uh, is an abstraction of the user model uh, this abstract user and it consists of these classes we have the get username uh, clean 
uh, is authenticated is, uh, is anonymous. You can uh, set password for setting passwords, check the password of the user. And yeah, and it is an, an it has subclass the abstract base user. The abstract base user has a lot of things and uh, it's a way advanced. Uh, it's a bit advanced and we are not going to use it. So we, for now, for simplicity purposes, we are just going to stick to our abstract user. And now the next step will be importing uh, our models. So from django.db port models. So we are, because we are going to be using it. And uh, in this file, we are just going to create an empty uh, class and we will call it custom user. And it uh, sub, uh, we are going to uh, subclass the abstract user. And then inside it, we are just going to uh, write pass because our intention is not to, yeah, we, we are not going to add anything at the moment, but we are going to come back to this file uh, maybe later tutorial. Then I uh, will still go back to the settings. There's something I've forgotten to add, maybe at the bottom. Since we have already added this uh, these users up, so we are going to add the auth or the auth user model, and we are going to refer it now to our users our users app. And remember, we have created our class that we call custom user. So we are going to it will be it's going to we are going to use a dot notation and add the users dot uh, custom user user. Yeah, so that's it. Then now we can proceed with migrating, running the migrations. So. It's until up to this point that you can be able to update our database, okay? So I'm going to run the similar command, uh, manage.py, make migrations. And I'm going to use the users. So you can use, uh, since we had also not done for the website, we can also repeat the same. So I won't, add users only because this will make migrations for the users app only so i'm just going to make uh, the migrations you can give it some time so after that we can now migrate okay so you'll notice that it has added the application here so now the next uh, step will be we'll, we are going to create forms inside this. Uh, we want forms that can be used for creating a user and also changing the details of a user. And uh, this is an implementation of the kind of like the HTML forms. So whenever you want to create a form inside an application, you can use the forms.py. You can create it inside the, the app. So for more details, you're, you're going to refer to the Django Forms uh, uh, documentation, which I'm also going to share in the description below. So we are going to import from Django uh, .contrib .auth, uh, import. So we are going to import the get user model. And uh, we are also going to import the user creation uh, model a uh, user creation form and the user change form so from django.contrib.auth authentication uh, dot forms uh, import you're going to import the user creation form and the user change form so these two forms are very important uh, when it comes to when we want to create a user and uh, you know update the user uh, details. And uh, there's something that I think it's worth mentioning. We have the get user model. So the get user model, uh, yeah, it's it refers to the user, uh, which is uh, a Django 
kind of a class where, where we have these different parameters. This is where you fetch the username, the first name, the last name, the email, and the password, and groups, and also user. You can also issue permissions. Uh, we have this staff uh, saying whether the user can access the administration site and whether the user is active or not. Okay. So let's go back to the code. And we are going to create a user create uh, a form to create a user. And it will be in a class form. So we can call it custom user creation form. And it, it uh, subclasses the uh, user creation form. I uh, have a typo. Custom user creation form. And inside it will create uh, the meta. So we are going to add the, um, the meta. And uh, basically the meta, I could refer to it as the inner class of your model, whereby an, uh, which can be used to uh, kind of uh, modify the behavior of the model. For example, if I want to have uh, verbose uh, names inside our models, we can use this meta. So I'm going to share the link in the description below for what is uh, what constitutes of the meta uh, meta class. So we have the model reference, and we are referring to the user model. Remember, we had imported the get user model, and then we have the fields, uh, which is uh, which will be a tuple, and uh, this tuple will contain email. Remember, we saw the email as one of the fields. And then we'll also add a uh, username. So there are those mandatory fields like password, and uh, which we are not going to add here. The password is a mandatory field. Uh, so the other class we are going to add is the uh, is the custom uh, user change form. Form, and this one will also. Uh, subclass user change form in our case and uh, we are going to add the meta class as well to allow us to allow the modifying the behavior of our class so it also uh, uses a get user model and for the fields we'll have the same fields which is uh, the email and uh, the username and since it's a tuple, we need to add a comma at the end here. Otherwise, we may encounter problems. So this is a tuple uh, that could probably include other fields. There are other mandatory fields. And the next step will be registering this uh, model in the admi admin site or in our administration. And we're just going to add the get user model as well. Contrib auth uh, import get user model. So the good thing about using Python is that you can see that it, it also auto completes. So we are going to import the user admin class. So from Django dot contrib dot auth admin import user admin oh, let me remove this it automatically added itself and finally we are going to import both of the the two uh, forms so from the forms that we had created so this dot imports the uh, these two class uh, these two classes from these forms dot py so we are going to import the custom user change form and the custom user creation form and then we are going to point it to our custom user which will be equals to the get user model and then we will create a class and we'll call it custom user admin And uh, we will subclass the user admin class. And then inside it, we will uh, add a form. And this form will be for the creating the user. So 
custom user creation form. And then we will add uh, the, our form, which is the custom user change form. And then the model in which we are referring to is called custom user. And it's the one that we have added up here. And uh, we have the, we can add something else, which is a list uh, display so that it can display the information. And actually, I think for this one, I'll leave it, I'll comment it out and I shall, we shall see what, uh, what this list display is all about. So we have the username and the email, just like we had added in our previous setup. And then the next final step will be registering it in the in dot site dot register. Uh, we'll register our custom user, and then we'll register our custom user admin admin. So this because we have registered this now, we can be able to create our users uh, while within the admin admin site. So I'll just uh, save that and then. Uh, the next step will constitute uh, creating our user, a new super user. So we remember we have not created a super user. So if we try to access the admin site, uh, let me confirm that the site is live. Yep. So if I try to, by default, we have this admin, which is the administration site for Django website. So we do not have a login for this, and that's why I want to create that user. So I'll go back to my docker compose command, docker compose, I exec, uh, the container, which is web, python, manage.py, create super user. Yeah, so it's going to ask a name, so I'll just add jkaryuki dev uh, email address. J Karyuki dev at email.com. I'm just adding a fictitious email and then I'll input my password. And uh, the super user has been created successfully. Let's now try and log in using that. So I have the username, which is J Karyuki dev. Password. So whenever I go to the user, so this is what we have. You have the email and the username and the email. So there is this list display. Let me just comment it out and see. Let's see what happens when I refresh the page. You notice that it shows all these other fields. So if I add the list display. Uh, it tells uh, I can tell it which fields to add and which you know if a field is not here then it will be to display here in the uh, administration the in this list rather so I'll just uh, resume just return it as it is then I can do a refresh you see now this is what we have so I can also add a user let me add another user so I can add a user like J karaoke dev two. So and then I can add the J J karaoke dev two. Or I can just add I'll add some other password for this user. And I can click on save. Yeah, so I've added another user, and then yeah, basically this uh, constitutes the creation of the Django uh, admin model or the customization of the Django admin admin model, which is I'd say three or four steps, uh, whereby we created our app, and the, our app is called uh, Users, and then we updated the settings.py. Uh, we registered our application in the settings.py and then we were able to create this reference for the 
auth user model to point to our users uh, dot custom uh, user. So uh, and then that custom user is inside the models of our application. And then the other step was to make migrations. Then after we've made our migrations, we customize the forms. We added a custom user creation form and a custom user change form. And then finally, we were able to uh, register these into the admin uh, admin uh, website. So, yeah, so those are the steps. And for more detail, uh, there's a uh, there's explained steps in the Django uh, Django uh, Django documentation. So this summarizes our tutorial. And uh, in the next uh, step, we are going to probably see how we can extend our website application. Uh, so if you like my videos, uh, kindly support by like, sharing, uh, and subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click the bell icon uh, so that whenever I upload a new uh, content on your videos you can be able to get a notification uh, that's it let's meet in our next tutorial thank you for watching